Hi, I'm Grisha Stewart. I own Ahimsa Dog Training in Seattle, and I'm also the author of the official Ahimsa Dog Training Manual, which has uh, a lot of this information uh, in it, but I'd like to, to give it to you live. So, Positive training tells people who are working with their dogs how to teach them what to do. And one of the issues that clients bring up is, well, what happens if the dog does something wrong? Don't I need to tell them? So if the dog jumps up on the couch and you didn't want them up on the couch, what do you do in that moment? Or if they're pulling a lead, what do you do if we're not using leash corrections? How, do we, how does the dog actually know? And I think the main thing is to focus on, again, back to, to positive training, what do we want them to do? And then making sure that they're not getting reinforced for those times when they do something incorrectly in, in our universe. So if the dog jumps up on the couch, then I wouldn't want to, I would definitely want to make sure that I'm not reinforcing that. If the dog jumps up, I don't want to pet the dog. I don't want to say, no, honey, you're not supposed to be up on the couch because that's attention for the dog. Um, but I also don't need to say, you know, you're a bad dog and smack the dog or kick them off. Um, the idea is just to make sure that it's minimally reinforcing as, as much as possible and then use that as information to say, okay, this dog doesn't understand what to do in the situation and how can I change that? So some training uh, off to the side. So in the moment, it's um, you can tell the dog to, to get off of the couch. You can move yourself so the dog will jump off the couch. You would need to train the dog specifically what off means. That's a behavior, so we can do that with positive reinforcement. So teaching them to, to get off on cue. Uh, you can also prevent it by tethering them so they can't reach the couch. Um, but in that moment, again, you want to make sure that whatever you do is not reinforcing and is also not scary to the dog. So a lot of times I'll just do, you know, clap, clap, clap to get the dog back onto the ground. After they've settled for a little bit, now that's something that I can turn around and reinforce with my attention. Um, but if I'm giving too much attention up here, we've got a problem. Um, the idea is to catch the intention. So when the dog has the intention of jumping up, that's a time to redirect them to something else. So you see them looking at the couch about to jump up, that's your moment to say, sit, and then you can reinforce that. So then there's the, I need to be close to my person or get attention. A behavior is now inserted that actually works to get that attention. And now you can reinforce with the same thing that they wanted in the first place. Uh, if instead what they really want is a soft place and not your attention, then directing them to their bed and maybe adding attention if that's helpful. Um, but catching the dog, when you see that little light bulb above their head of, hmm, I have an idea, and then Pointing, giving them something else to do at that moment is much more powerful than after the fact telling them that they were wrong. Using aversives can be dangerous in a couple of ways. So behaviorally it can be dangerous in the sense that they could just be learning something completely different. You think you're telling the dog no and they're hearing, oh, the person's looking at me, I must be doing something right. Um, so that's one thing. But in terms of creating fear in the dog, so if I'm, if I'm snapping my fingers loudly, if I'm saying st and that's associated with something negative for the dog, um, or actually giving a correction in terms of pain, uh, we are creating associations, not just the learning that's happening in terms of the behavior, but that maybe my hands are now scary and I'm more likely to be bitten if I'm in there correcting the dog. Um, or alpha rolling or doing whatever kinds of corrections depends on that behavior. Um, there is a study from the University of Pennsylvania that said that um, in about 25% of cases using confrontational tools uh, as correction, so some sort of you know, shouting, yelling, pinning, all of that stuff, in at least 25% of the cases, the dogs uh, became worse in terms of their, their aggression toward the person. If you think to yourself, how is this for the dog? Is this how you would like to be learning? And that answer is no. Granted, you're not a dog, but I think pretty much all of us would agree that learning by having something painful done to us would not be how we want to learn. So if you find yourself in a, in a moment where something has happened and, you, and your dog, you, you were thinking, well, he needs to know that he's done this wrong. And the question is, why does he need to know that? is because you want to be on the exactly same wavelength with your dog or that you want this behavior to stop. And if it's because you want that behavior to stop, then again, most effective learning would be to use our human brains, step back, and how can we train the dog to do something, something different in this situation. So if you're in the middle of a training session and let's say you ask the dog to sit and he offers a down instead, 
what you basically need to do is just some sort of a, like a micro break. So you just turn away yeah. for just not even a second, just a quarter of a second. Just take your attention off of the dog Down. and then regroup. So get them to stand up and then ask for the behavior again. You don't want such a long behavior that the dog finds it aversive to work with you because you keep leaving. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you want to make sure that you're not reinforcing that behavior by giving the next cue. So if they're in the down and you ask for the sit, then that is potentially reinforcing. Um, other possibilities, let's say you have a dog that's chasing the cat, so kind of on the other end of the continuum. One effective tool is something uh, like a timeout, uh, but basically the idea is that because that lowers the arousal. Um, on the other hand, if that's your only tool, the dog is not very likely to keep learning. Uh, or to actually learn that chasing the cat is wrong. Um, the idea is what you, you don't even need to bother teaching the dog that chasing the cat is wrong. Teach them that anytime he sees a cat, he goes and he grabs a Kong toy, for example. So you see that intention in their head and you say, hmm, go get the Kong. And now eventually you have a dog who's developed a new behavioral pattern. So if there is a situation in which you find that you need to make the behavior stop or have less behavior, then that's, technically punishment. So punishment means they're just a reduction of behavior. There's two ways to punish. You can punish with something that's uh, aversive to the dog. You're giving something like a correction or uh, leaning toward them or shouting at them or, or whatever. Um, there's also the punishment of taking away something. So ha like having your pay docked, for example, would be a way of punishing you that doesn't uh, present an aversive to you. So there, there's a difference between using tools that would really damage the relationship, like Con confronting the dog uh, versus just making their life a little bit less pleasant. Now, on the other hand, uh, using, taking away something that they want. On the other hand, anytime you do find yourself resorting to punishment, that's an opportunity to say, there's a training failure somewhere here, and I need to be better at teaching them what to do in this situation. So basically the idea is, in terms of punishment or the, the moments when you find yourself needing to tell the dog no, the idea is step back, think about it, and figure out how can you tell the dog yes.